Everyone. I think we should get this show on the road. I know you all want to get back to the beach. <laughs> I wish I was getting a, a trip to the beach down here, but it, this is a, a really a special day, and I want to welcome all of you to, to Lewis. Um, the mayor is here. Mayor Becker, thank you for having us. Uh, Secretary Garvin here at the, your facility. We've got the Speaker of the House. He's engaged with the Secretary and Representative Longhurst, which is the main sponsor of House Bill 200. We've got lots of people who have working, been working on this issue for a long time. Uh, and I'm count myself among them. 30 years ago, then Secretary Toby Clark, who was the secretary for then Governor Mike Castle, sponsored a planning session right here at the Verdon Center. Many of you were there, and I'm looking at you, Bob, it's great to see you. Bob Stickles was there representing Sussex County. He's moved up to, to Newcastle County now. I was there representing Newcastle County and Jeff and others and press and so many of you were, were part of that, uh, that planning session. We came out with a plan, a study document and a plan to address water and wastewater issues across our state. Many of which, most of which, we're down here in the lower part of our state in Sussex County, mostly because of the nature of, of the towns and the systems in the northern part of our state. We have big public wastewater and water systems that were installed mostly with federal funding that was available many, many years ago. And so they were able to be funded in a way that the communities themselves and the ratepayers could afford it. Much, much more difficult uh, down here. And so over the last 30 years, subsequent secretaries of, of uh, natural resources and environmental control, subsequent members of the General Assembly, others that are in the business, citizens involved, have been doing the Lord's work, so to speak, to make sure that these systems were funded and addressed and, and so on and so forth. The main issue throughout the, the past 30 years has always been funding. Where are you going to get the money? And we've had all kinds of debates. I've won and lost friends as part of those discussions. But we are incredibly fortunate to have two things this year. One is a bill, House Bill 200, that will establish the rules of the game and the rules of engagement and bring different agencies together to make those funds available, mostly to, to small little communities. We will have a funding mechanism, which Secretary Garvin will talk about, specifically geared towards hard to finance systems in small towns and small communities, mostly across Sussex County here. And we also have tens of millions of dollars that have been appropriated by the legislature in our capital budget this year, the largest capital budget the, the state has ever had, to be able to create the funding mechanism for these systems. And in addition to that, federal resources coming with the relief funds that our own now President Joe Biden have, uh, have made available st to states with specific uh, eligibility for water and wastewater systems. That's a big deal, long time coming. And as your governor, it's just an incredible privilege to be in the position with that kind of personal background and involvement to be able to announce uh, these things, to be able to put the resources together, working with our colleagues in the General Assembly, and today uh, to so sign this piece of legislation that will be so critical in, in making sure that it gets done and gets done in the right way, in the fair way so that ratepayers across our state are on an even keel with respect to their obligations as well, because most of these systems, as you know, are funded with, with user fees. And so I want to thank the speaker. I want to thank uh, Representative Longhurst for her sponsorship of this bill. And I think I'm supposed to turn it over to her for her, for her comments. You're next, okay? Oh, yes, you are, in fact, you were supposed to come before me. I'm just so happy to be here. 
and I'm looking out at all you folks, and I can recognize you because I can see your mouths and your noses. You don't have masks on. And and to that uh, to that end, I want to. We have some people who've been we've been working closely with. Greg Patterson is one who's standing in the back, who we stole from the Department of Natural Resources Environmental Control to bring over to our Division of Public Health to help us with communications and with the science and data systems around our response to COVID-19. Thank you, Greg Patterson. I, I'm still disappointed that you're moving back, but that's a, a, a He's discussion. Already He's already back. All right, you already reclaimed him. You're gonna hear in a minute from Jamie Mack. And Jamie Mack has among his responsibilities clean water in the Department of Health and Social Services, but for the last year and a half, he has been the point person for public health in the relationships with businesses across our state and our towns and communities, as Mayor Becker knows, making sure that we keep them alive, frankly, and do it in a way that's safe for the citizens. So please help me thank uh, Jamie Mack for the tremendous work that he's done. So usually the job as a cabinet member is to make the governor's job easier. The governor just made my job easier because welcome everybody, check. Introduce the governor, check. So I've got a few things off of my list that, that um, I had to, to do. The one thing I did uh, want to do is um, recognize a few people. I kind of feel like uh, at the Academy Awards that inevitably I'm going to miss somebody, so I apologize in advance. Uh, we would be here for two hours if I introduce everyone who really deserves to be introduced. But obviously we have the governor, we have uh, the majority leader in the House, uh, Representative Longhurst. Uh, we have uh, Senator Lopez, who I, I just informed him that it took me three days to find out he wasn't running for re-election. And, and I'm, I'm not happy. He and I grew up in the same neighborhood, went to the same pool when we were growing up. So uh, he will be sorely missed um, um, in the General Assembly. We, of course, have the Speaker of the House, Pete Schwarzkopf, who doesn't really need an introduction. But if I didn't introduce him, if I didn't, yeah, if I didn't introduce him, I, I would be in trouble. Uh, of course, the governor mentioned uh, uh, Jamie Mack, uh, who has done a tremendous job. Uh, we have uh, Darren Gordon, who, who is from the um, from Lewis uh, Board of Public Works, who will be sp speaking later. We have Mayor Becker, the mayor of Lewis. Uh, this is Denrex facility, but we are in his town. Uh, and I did say to the mayor that um, usually when I'm down here, I like to actually get to the beach. This is the closest I'm going to get to the beach today because of my schedule, and, and I'm, I'm not particularly happy about that. Um, I would introduce all of the Denrec people and the, and the people from the governor's office, but um, there's too many to mention, except I will mention a couple. Uh, we have our uh, Deputy Secretary, Lisa Boren Ogden. Uh, the governor mentioned my chief of staff, Greg Patterson, who is back at Denrec, and we are not going to let him go. Him We're not going to let him go again. He still works for you. He just works for you in a different place. Um, I, I do want to particularly mention uh, Greg Pope, and Laura Robbins. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit later about an initiative that we're releasing today, and they're really the backbone of, of all of that. And so, uh, thank you for that. We have Terry Deputy, our, our division director, uh, a fellow cabinet member, Rick Geisenberger, uh, for the, the the Department of Finance. Great to see you, Greg. Uh, uh, Rick, he's been very important in all of these conversations. Um, yeah, um, we have uh, Mayor Stan Mills. Um, we have uh, Press Lee, who is, is the, the, the head of the Board of Public Works here in Lewis and, and a partner on, on the initiative uh, as well. Um, we've got uh, uh, Denrick folks, uh, uh, Ginny Eisenberry and Nikki Taylor from Artesian Water. We've got uh, Carol Ann Wicks. I don't know if Carol Ann is here. Uh, she was scheduled to be here, former uh, cabinet secretary. Chris Basin from the Center for Inland Bays. Um, uh, uh, Joanne, you can go sit there. You're going to speak, too. We have uh, Joanne McGeehock, who is the interim uh, director of the Delaware Nature Society. Um, 
uh, Emily Nerls, who's also from the, the Nature Society. Um, we have Bob Stickles, who has worn many hats throughout his career and, and too numerous to mention. Uh, Sandy Spence from um, uh, the League of Women Voters. And, and I want to uh, take a special moment. Uh, the governor has talked a lot about the history, and I'll talk about it a little bit more. But Jerry Kaufman, uh, who has been, I mean, when you talk about clean water, you can't talk about it without uh, Jerry Kaufman's uh, name uh, coming about just for his tremendous work. And everybody else that I may not have mentioned, you're here because you have been critical. All right. Uh, I, I thought his outfit spoke for itself, but we, we have Jeff Bross, who, who is, is uh, heads up the Wastewater Infrastructure Advisory uh, Council, which is really key to all this that, that we're, we're talking about. So, um, again, I know there's many more that, that uh, deserve recognition, but uh, I promised everyone we wouldn't be here all day. So, um, so uh, the one other person I, I want to recognize, and, and we texted with each other last night, and he was scheduled to be here today, but he had some uh, pressing matters with his other job, uh, is uh, Senator Brian Townsend. Uh, and he wanted to express his, his excitement that we finally reached this day. And, and so I told him I would, I would pass along his, his regrets and, and the fact that he is, he is quietly excited in uh, the northern part of the state. Um, so with, without further ado, um, see this is the part where I introduce the governor. We can skip that. Um, it's an important day for clean water, uh, co collaborative, so forth and so on. Um, so with that, um, after I'm gonna introduce uh, the majority leader uh, of the House of Representatives who's really been a driving force behind what we're here to sign today. Her enthusiasm, um, her encouragement, some people define encouragement sometimes differently than others, but um, um, uh, the sponsor of this bill, I, 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 this is an incredible day and, and it's great to, to, to be here with uh, the Majority Leader, um, Representative Valley Longhurst. Um, I'm a little shorter. Um, first of all, clean water is a right and it's not a privilege. And that is what I've been saying from day one when I took this on. So remember that as you leave today. It is a right. It is not a privilege. So I guess I have to go back to this morning. Um, sometimes when we do legislation, we don't understand like how important they are. And this morning, I, I get up every morning, I work out. I went to my trainer and we did upper body. And as we were working out, she's like, so anything happening today? And I'm like, yeah. And I, and I just, I took a moment. I was like, yeah, something big is going to happen today. It's going to be historic in the state of Delaware. So what I want you to do is when I was driving down here today, I took in everything around me as I was driving. Sometimes when we drive, we just kind of look off to the side. We're like on our phone, on a phone call, like Pete and I are always on phone calls every day. And we use that time to catch up with everybody. But I did not, well, he was the first person I talked to this morning. After that, I just drove down here and just took in the day. And I want you guys to look next to the person who's sitting next to you. And I want you to look at that person, know who they are. Governor Carney. Look at that person, shake their hand. Because you need to remember this day and remember who you sat with. You know who that person is today and what they wore and Jeff's crazy tie. You have to remember this moment today because this is the day that Governor Peterson had years ago with the Coastal Zone Act. And that is the most iconic environmental bill that we have ever done. Well, actually, I wasn't here, but that was an iconic moment, historic, for the Coastal Zone Act. Today is the second one. And I want you to remember who's here today. And I want you to remember that Governor Carney is the one that's signing this bill today. And I want you to remember that Representative Schwarzkopf is here, Representative Ernie Lopez in his last year, Secretary Garvin. This bill has evolved so much over the last few years, and it started 30 years ago. 
and then it started back in 2015 when we picked it up again. And the, the champions for that were Senator Townsend, Representative Mike Mulroney, um, Senator Richardson, and then Representative Ronnie Gray. It wasn't me. I, I, it wasn't me. I was, I was there to support them. I didn't know where they were going with this task force. But Jeff, you were there. Um, the Nature Society was there. All you people were there. And you really didn't let it go. And Representative Mulroney, I just wish he was here today. I did call him yesterday and tell him that we we're going to finally sign the bill into law. And he was pretty excited because it was, it, was it, it was a challenge for him. But, you know, things happen for a reason. It didn't happen 30 years ago. It didn't happen back in 2016. But it has evolved. And it has evolved to the point that it's actually a great piece of legislation. And with the patience of everybody here today, we are making history. We are saying that Delaware cares about our water. We are investing in it. We can go back and say we needed taxes, we needed this, we needed that, but with the persistence of our governor, he's like, no, we're just putting 50 million down and we're gonna get 30 million match from the feds. So we've got $80 million to clean our water. So everything from Newcastle County for the development they're doing, Kent County with the agriculture and with the down here at the beaches, you have the communities that need the clean water because we need it for our tourism. We need it for our children. You know, this bill is going to be a legacy bill for all of us that are sitting here, everybody that took part in it. And, and you know, I just look out on there, everybody here, and I'm just, I'm so grateful that you stuck by us and you, the water warriors were the people that really pushed this bill. Um, I could tell you, you know, a couple years ago when I decided when Representative Mulroney um, decided to retire, which I didn't, wasn't fond of, I walked into Speaker Schwarzkopf's office and I said, I think I'm going to take this bill. And if you know Pete, he goes, he has this, and he's like, oh, here we go, right? And, um, and I said to him, I said, we got to do this. And he's always been a champion for this clean water. We just didn't know how we, how we could make it happen. And I, I have to say that if it wasn't for Representative Schwarzkopf, I wouldn't be standing here with all of you today and the governor to get this bill passed because sometimes you need that person that like when you're going off the ledge, you know, it's like a lot of times I teeter, I'm like on this ledge and Pete's the one who pulls me back. And he tells me, you need to redo this, you need to rethink this, you need to calm down, you need to work this out. And, you know, if it wasn't for your support, Pete, we wouldn't be here. So what I'm going to say is that I am t soaking this in, and I want to thank the governor for finally being the one that says we're going to make this happen. Because we did make this happen. And it's historic. And remember this day. I know there's probably three pieces of legislation in my lifetime that I've done in Lake Hall, and this is going to rank up there with the top three. And um, it wasn't my baby, but it's something that I just felt like it needed to get done. And Sean Garvin, thank you so much. I mean, you and I went back and forth a lot of times. And, um, you know, good things happen when you have people who push back. When you push back, not everybody, you know, is going to get what they want. But we have a bill. And it was a bipartisan bill. We have Republicans and Democrats, and it passed unanimously. That's what good legislation is about. Thank you very much. So as the majority leader mentioned, that was the encouragement part that um, we, were, we were working on. Um, so a few other speakers, but before we get to that, the governor mentioned something. Um, which has been near and dear to his heart and, and mine as well, um, um, and is the Clean Water Initiative for Underserved Communities, which we are, have released today. I think it's actually up on, on, online now. Um, and it's something that the governor, when he talked about the, the, the um, castle meeting here at the Verdon Center, I mean, it goes back to the days that I, I worked with the governor uh, at Newcastle County. Um, and it, it, it's always been a struggle to look at these underserved communities and figure out how we can address their water and drinking water issues at the same time make sure that they have a roof over their heads. And that's been the struggle. And when the governor um, uh, and I first talked about potentially him nominating me uh, to be secretary of DENREC, one of the first things that we talked about was how can we solve that issue during his administration? 
Um, it has been it has been that important and that critical. Um, and between a collaboration with with Denrec, DHSS, and the Housing Authority, we started back in 2018, February 2018, actually, to start figuring out how do we identify communities, how do we put together. Um, a matrix in figuring out how do we rank uh, those communities and how do we actually get money into those communities. And so over, over the last couple of years, uh, through the governor's recommended budget and the actions of the General Assembly, we've been putting money aside for those underserved communities. And, and we're beginning the first one, which was identified by Greg and Laura back in late 2018, Donovan Smith, uh, that we're working on. And then we have a list, and you'll see it in the uh, in the initiative, a list of short-term and then a long-term strategy to, to, to get to other communities. And so, um, uh, and, and the, the Clean Water for Delaware Act and the Trust Fund is, is a important piece of really seeing that through to flourishing. And, and uh, we're going to introduce um, Darren Gordon from Lewis in, uh, in a little bit. Um, and they're our first partner in figuring out how do we address th those communities. And so um, look for that. It's online. Uh, it's, it's, it's groundbreaking, and it couldn't, we couldn't see it through without this legislation and, and the investment that, that has been made. So uh, I want to thank um, everybody for, for their part in that process, uh, and all of you here today are, are part of that process. Um, so my next introduction, because we're just going to go off script totally, um, is the Speaker of the House, um, uh, Pete Schwarzkopf, and, and the incredible work he has done to help kind of lead not only this initiative, but, but many others uh, through the state. And, and the, the Speaker would like to say a few words. Thank you, Sean. Um, first, before I get started, I want to say something to Ernie. This is the first time I've seen him since his announcement. Uh, Ernie, it has been a pleasure to work with you for the last decade. I mean, it just, uh, I, this community could not have asked for a better partner in crime uh, that, to help me out. Uh, they haven't found out yet, Ernie, that's all. That's why he's leaving. I, I just want to say, it's been, a, it's, been, it's been good. It's been really, really good. And this community deserves nothing less. So. Thank you for everything you've done for the community. Thank you for being my friend. And thank you for creating a work relationship that is the envy of the rest of the state. So thank you. I know you're at peace with yourself, and I know you're happy. So um, I just want to tell you a little quick story. Val's heard the story. I think the governor may have heard it. When I came out of the state police in 1978, they, they signed me to Georgetown. And I was a beach boy. I was from down around Ocean View, Bethany Beach area. And I didn't even know where Georgetown was, hardly. I sure as heck didn't know where Ellendale was. So I went riding to see what my new troop territory was. So I went to Ellendale, and the first person I talked to in Ellendale was a man called Harold Truxton. His name was Harold Truxton. He was the mayor of Ellendale. You're laughing, I know. So I asked him what the problems are. If, you, if none of you are familiar with Ellendale except driving through it on your way down here sometimes, um, Ellendale is a little sleepy little town. You know, when I was up there, I didn't even know it was a, a, a legitimate town. I thought it was just an area. So I got talking to uh, Mayor Truxton, and I said, what are the issues in Ellendale? And the first thing he said was water. The water. The drinking water in our area is horrible. And then he proceeded to take me to his house and show me white shirts that were no longer white. They were brown, iron in the water, nasty water. He talked to me about kids that had lesions on their arms and everything from the water. This was 1978, 43, 44 years ago, going on 44 years ago. And here we are, and we're still talking about water. But we're going to fix it. We're going to do something about it this year. I will tell you this right now. Um, there have been many people, Governor Val, a lot of people involved in this over the years, Brian Townsend, Mike Mulroney. Um, but when she walked into my office that day and said, we need to push this, I was like, we're going to get this done. She's going to get this done because if any of you know her, she is a PIA. She can be really, really forceful in her where she's going and what she wants to do. Uh, we had discussions along the way. She, she would come in and say, well, we're going to do this, this, this. I'm like, well, hold on. Let's sit back and talk about this thing. We have been together in leadership for 14 years. Uh, we are a, a very good tandem. Uh, I hold her back sometimes, and she kicks me in the butt and gets me moving sometimes. So it's a perfect, perfect uh, team. 
not a marriage. No, don't say that. My wife, don't put that anywhere because my wife will be upset with that. I, I will say this: many people have tried, many people fell short, but she didn't. In conjunction with the governor's team and everything, putting this thing together, the issue hasn't ever been not wanting to do it. The issue has always been where's the money coming from. So working together, this was a good collaborative effort on this part. Uh, we're standing here today getting ready to sign a bill that is probably the most impactful bill for all of the residents and citizens of Delaware that I've seen in my long time, <laughs> long time in office. Um, this will have an impact on us in our lifetime, in our kids' lifetime, and our grandkids' lifetime. We're talking about drinking water, storm water. We're talking about the water behind us. We're talking about a lot of different things. And there's a lot of money there to do a lot of things. I think we're going to run out of people to do them, uh, but we'll get it done. So I just want to thank the governor, his team, my cohort over here, uh, Val. Uh, I don't know that this thing would have been done if she hadn't gotten involved. So my hat's off to all of you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Appreciate that. I, I it just kind of dawned on me, and I don't know if a, anybody else had, had noticed it, but I do have to point it out that the, the majority leader mentioned that before she came down, she was working with her personal trainer. I know I got up at 6:30 just to struggle to get down here in time, so I'm not sure when she was working out with the personal trainer. But that just gives you an idea of uh, her tenacity and why we're we're here today. Um, I did want to. Um, introduce and, and a lot of us have mentioned uh, uh, Senator Lopez um, this is his district and, and a lot of the issues that we're addressing uh, are in this district and I thought that plane that was coming over was saying you know congratulations good luck Senator Lopez but have this be the first of many in his retirement tour uh, Senator Lopez Well, thank you, Mr. Secretary, and uh, th thank you, Governor. I want to thank my colleagues, the Speaker, for his kind words and his friendship, and, uh, and our Majority Leader, and, uh, and thank each and every one of you. And, and I am just so incredibly proud that we get to sign this historic piece of legislation right here in the 6th State Senate District, here in the first town in the first state. And I want to thank all of our partners. The Speaker and I always say, and, and, and I'm sure the Majority Leader feels the same way, the partnerships that we have with our municipally elected officials whether it's at the county level or whether it's at the city level or in our towns is something that is so valuable to the work that we do on behalf of all of our shared constituencies. So whether it's Tom Panetta at the Board of Public Works who's done a terrific job as well or whether it's each and every one of you who have served and who've raised your right hand to take an oath of office to protect the rich natural heritage of Delaware for what? And for those of us who take the same oath for future generations of Delawareans for future generations of Delawareans. And that's what we get the honor of doing here today. I wanted to speak very briefly because in addition to all the tremendous things that the speaker and the secretary and the governor said about the majority leader, I wanted to emphasize the fact that in these very divisive political times, this is one of the most bipartisan pieces of legislation that has come through the Delaware General Assembly. And that's due to the leadership of the majority leader. This is one of the most bipartisan pieces of legislation because of the fact that the majority leader was able to advocate to each and every member of the General Assembly who co-sponsored this bill, of which I was proud to co-sponsor, the emphasis of the fact that when it comes to feeding people, clothing people, and housing people, and getting them clean water, those are not partisan issues. Those are our issues. Those are Delaware issues. And when it comes to making sure that our families and future generations of Delawareans know that that investment's being made by those who are currently serving on their behalf, she made that happen. And I want to thank her, not just on behalf of myself, but my caucus. The, major the minority leader, Gerald Hawker, was a co-sponsor of this bill. As she said, Ronnie Gray in the House of Representatives was a co-sponsor of this bill. If you look down the list of co-sponsors, it's not just individuals who have coastal districts, it was so many members of the General Assembly. Because again, feeding people, clothing people, and housing people, and making sure that they have clean water are bipartisan issues and they're Delaware issues. So 
I want to end with this. And I've said this before, but I've never said it with the governor standing or sitting here next to me. And I also think this is extremely important because Secretary Geisenberg is here and Secretary Garvin is here. In the Senate, things are done a little bit differently than it is in the House. We have the privilege in the Senate of confirming the governor's nominees to cabinet positions. And I want to say to this governor, with him standing, with him sitting here next to me, that I've been so thankful and so blessed to be a member of the Senate for the last eight years, but especially during this guy's term in office, that we have seen come before us as nominees, whether it's Secretary Geisenberg in finance or Secretary Garvin, whose work has such a tremendous impact on the people of the 6th District, caring, competent, and capable nominees that have been brought forward and sent to us in the Senate by this guy right here. And it's been a privilege, not just for me, but all of us, to make sure in the Senate that we've made those confirmations and put good people to work on your behalf in these secretary positions. And Secretary Garvin, and I, I want to thank you for your tremendous work. This is a wonderful day. And Secretary Geisenberg with the hat and the sunglasses, we see you. And the financial piece of this is so important. And your helping and your stewardship and shepherding and, and being a guide in that is something that's helped make today possible. So with that said, again, I just want to thank each and every one of you for being here today. And I want to thank the governor and the secretary and especially my colleagues in the General Assembly. Thank you. I will sa say, Senator, my nomination was the best three months of my life. So I uh, <laughs> appreciate that. I don't remember that. <laughs> I, I was a yes. <laughs> um, next, I, I, I want to introduce our, our colleagues. Um, uh, from the Department of Health and Social Services um, Division of Public Health, who has been a key partner. And we talk about the funding that is going to come out of this trust and, and the investment that be being made. It's going to be DENRAC and DHSS that really have the kind of the lion's share of, of the responsibility of putting this money to work on the ground. And so uh, I want to introduce, I, I was going to give you his title, but Jamie Mack wears so many different hats that it would be unfair for, to pigeonhole him into one thing. So with that, I'd like to introduce uh, Jamie Mack. Thank you, Secretary. Um, for the record, I generally call myself Environmental Health Director because that's the easiest one of the titles to explain to everybody. Um, I just want to thank everyone involved here, uh, Representative Longhurst, the governor, for the perseverance that was needed to get this bill through to today. Um, I've been part of a lot of the conversations over the last few years and sessions in the legislature and I can assure you it was not a smooth path and I'm very grateful and I know my agency is very grateful that they did persevere and we got to this point because as Secretary Garvin said there's a working partnership between DENREC and public health and he had um, recognized uh, Laura and Greg from the clean water program and standing with them is Sandy Spiegel who's the administrator for the drinking water state revolving fund so you can see that you know we certainly are partners that we even stand together you know at events like this and we're very excited because over the past couple of years we've been able to do some small projects in underserved communities fire protection in cheswald um, address some of the issues that were mentioned for ellendale and some other areas but really with the resources and you know the new um, programs that we're talking about now we just see that expanding and us being able to do so much more in in these underserved communities and we're very very excited about that so just thank you everyone Uh, next, I want to introduce uh, Darren Gordon, uh, who represents uh, Lewis Board of Public Works. And, and as I said, in the first um, really important part of the Clean Water Initiative for underserved communities, Lewis is, is a key partner in all of that. And, and I, I want to introduce Darren to talk about how this, what this means to, to Lewis and the work they have going on. Darren. You saw it's probably the only knucklehead with a jacket on took it off. It's much better. Um, it's, it's great to be here. I'm, I am a utility director, and I hope you know that the characteristic of a utility director is that he wants to be at the very last page of the, the newspaper. He doesn't want to be in front of anybody because he just wants to do his job and be left alone. And if you look in the back, there's a whole lot of people that are just the very same way. And I'm going to introduce a couple of them and, and share that with you. I once had an employee that had on his bumper sticker it said 
nobody knows what I do until I don't do it. <laughs> and we've been blessed in America and Delaware that you've got some of the best utilities ever. When you go home, you don't even think about it. You turn on the light switch and it's there. You turn on your computer, the power's there. When you go to a foreign country and you try and drink the water, good catch. Um, you probably got to be careful, but in America, when you go to a drinking fountain, you can have absolute confidence that you're not going to get sick or have problems. Same thing when we talk about something that's not quite as sexy as that. When you go to the bathroom, it goes away, and we don't cause pandemics, and we don't kill people because of the dirty water. Can we do better? Yes. And so with that yes, we start to look at Donovan Smith Trailer Park. Donovan Smith Trailer Park has about 80 um, current residents. They have the possibility of 130, and they have a failing sewer system. In fact, it's really, really bad. We knew that it was failing, but just recently, thanks to, to DENREC, their inspections, they have received an NOV, and that's got to be repaired with more haste than that. But this is not something that we haven't been working on, and I would like to take and point out some of the people we've been working with. First and foremost, DENREC themselves have been working with us, and while um, Secretary Garvin's running the show, you also have Greg Pope and Laura Robbins and Keith Cooker. You've had Terry Deputy that's been there, and those people have run the financial side of things, and currently we have available to us $5 million to go in and replace the sewer system and water system for Donovan Smith Trailer Park. Now, there's been a lot of things in the newspaper lately. I thank Mark Schaefer. He's a councilman for the county. He's really gotten things kind of stirred up and, and looked at. And I thank him for that. And so with that, the question is, where's the holdup? And I'm going to tell you very simply. I'll throw them right under the bus. We have gone through agreements. We've gone through engineering. We've done all of the things necessary to have that program, to have that infrastructure installed. But the owner is not able to give us an easement. And I would just simply publicly say and encourage him, give us the easement. Let's go and let's get this done and let's get this fixed. The next couple of people I'd like to thank and I'm gonna, we're going to have to trade ties. That's the best tie ever. But I'd like to thank the Water Infrastructure Advisory Council. These folks have done a fantastic job. And they've been doing it for years. This is not new for them. I've been here 12 years. And the Water Infrastructure, the, the WEAC, we call them, much shorter. These are folks that know about water and sewer. And they are concerned about these things and getting the funding to the right people to make these programs happen. So don't think that this hasn't been happening. It has. And so I thank them. They're professional. They ask tough questions. They are generous when they can be. And they're absolutely always fair. And they follow the rules. And I appreciate them. And, and we should be absolutely thankful. And that's another one of those groups that I think they do things without being seen or heard. And yet they should be. They absolutely should be. Another one that I would like to talk about is our, my own staff. You've got people on our side that I have engineers. I've got GMB, Charlie O'Donnell, and Vince Luciani that already have that designed to go put in Donovan Smith's park. I also have an attorney who has worked with the park owner's attorney and all of those things going back and forth, trying to make sure things, everything's right. And while those people are getting paid for it, absolutely, they are also doing it for the betterment of the community and the betterment of what they know is right. And so I salute those people. The last person I would like to kind of introduce you to is the people from the park itself. There is one in particular, her name is Clara McNichols. And Clara has been there from the get-go. Clara is a retired nurse. She has, out of the goodness of her heart, and frankly, she's told me, she said she felt that this was kind of a, a thing from Heavenly Father. That God said, this is what we need you to, to, to take and, and grab by the horns. And Clara has done just that. I think the mayor can attest. I don't know how many phone calls he's received. I know how many I've received. My guess is there's folks at the county and probably at Denrick that have, know the name. But she does it because she loves her community. She says that she's got people there that are in just as great a need. She's on a very fixed income. Most of the people there are on that fixed income. You've got folks that are... Um, from veterans on that fixed income, there's people in that park that need help, and they can't pay for that themselves. 
And so all of these things have been put into place. Again, I reiterate, it's not anybody here that's held this up. We have one person and we're working on making sure that that gets changed. Clara also, I invited her, talked to her yesterday on the phone and she has been battling cancer for several years now and she's now having kidney failure and on dialysis and doing those things. But it is still her hope that this gets done. And so with that, I will conclude. And with the words that I talked to Claire about, she wanted me to thank and give gratitude and thanks to the governor for signing this, that hopefully this will be enough to get that over the, the goal line and get it completed. And that I hope, I hope, and have faith that that will do it. And I also have hope and faith that this is going to help other communities, other groups that are in the very same need as those people at Donovan Smith Trailer Park. Thank you very much. Thanks, Darren. Um, one of the things that was said most to me when I first got here was, wow, this is fabulous weather. Um, and it is. It's probably the best day we've had of the summer. Um, no, no, no. No, 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 no. Keith Warren is here representing the lieutenant governor. The lieutenant governor is responsible for weather in the state of Delaware. So, Keith, please pass along to the lieutenant governor our thanks for, for the weather today. <laughs> Well, you span all the counties, Bob, so I don't know what, you know. Um, so the, the last speaker uh, today is, is representing not only uh, the Delaware Nature Society, um, but really representing all the, the non-governmental partners that really made this day a reality. Um, there were folks who were engaged in the task force, folks who spoke to all of us uh, on, a, on a consistent basis on the importance of this uh, and the need to get this thing done. And so uh, it is with great pleasure that I get to introduce the Interim Executive Director of the Delaware Nature Society, Joanne McGeeha. Thank you so much, Secretary. Uh, I'm just really grateful to be here on behalf of the Delaware Nature Society, our board of directors, which I see many here today. Um, our staff, our great advocacy team, Emily Neerl's here, and Marissa and Ellie, who couldn't make, make it today. But um, we are so pleased to be here, and of course our volunteers, the Water Warriors, to celebrate House Bill 200. It's been six years we've been working on this initiative, which is pretty incredible. So we can't say enough about the champions in the General Assembly, especially Representative Longhurst for her leadership, Senator Townsend who um, was with us all the way and all their hard work over the years to ensure this legislation got passed. And this was the year they did it, which is incredible. We especially want to thank Governor John Carney um, for his administration's support for clean water, making it happen. Again, it's been a long journey and we are so grateful for you to make it happen. This historic investment in clean water is significant. Um, I just have to also thank our many partners who've been with us on the journey. So Center for Inland Bays, I know Chris Basin is here. Um, Jerry Kaufman and University of Delaware Water Resources have been a partner all the way. Uh, we can't say enough also about the Clean Water Alliance members. Many are from nonprofit, for-profit, uh, private agencies that came together to support this initiative and over 3,000 water warriors. Those are volunteer advocates who raised their voices and spoke on behalf of this initiative. We couldn't have done it without you. Of course, progress is going to be made and has been made over the last six years, but it's important to remember what's happening. Climate change is real. It's here. There's immediate action that's needed to protect our environment and water is certainly one of them. Protecting our natural resources is our priority. And especially with natural waterways, 90% of which have been impaired, um, polluted, and rising waters that affect our waterways is, is really it's time for making that change. We still have fish advisories, as you know, and this is certainly not the only problems, as was spoken earlier today. Access to tested and treated clean drinking water still varies by geographic region in our state. This legislation is going to help change that. So today we're setting a new path forward. HB 200's creation for a dedicated and cabinet level strategic response fund will aim to do the following. Increase access to clean water, address flooding, rising water, storm water abatement, and wastewater needs, and help clean up our streams and waterways. 
probably one of the most significant parts of this bill, which we're really pleased to support and happy to see that it's part of it, is that water infrastructure funding will be readily available to all communities in need. And this is significant. It legis this legislation calls for prioritizing water infrastructure projects, as we heard earlier, in low-income communities and those that don't have access right now to clean water. It's these voices that need to be heard and are heard, and they will be, uh, the projects will be recommended by the task group. And of course, as an environmental justice is a priority for our organization, we're really pleased to see that a community member will be part of the Water Infrastructure Advisory Council to re represent those underserved communities. So it's time to get to work. Let's roll up our sleeves. It's just the first step. Of course, we look forward to working with the state and all of our partners will continue to do that to advocate for how this water will be implemented over the next few years. Again, clean water is critical. It's part of our environment. It supports wildlife, our economy, our food supply, and public health. So HB 200 is ensuring that these vital resources are protected today and for future generations. Thank you so much. Good job. Thank you. All right, Governor, you ready? I'm ready. All right, if I can have all these folks, Mayor Mills, Mayor Becker, our, our partners in at Georgetown, our, our students. I mean, we talk about the future. This is, this is what it's all about. If you can all join us up here.